The year 2024 was an exciting year for the Linux desktop, but also for me personally. We have seen countless improvements for gamers, extensive work in HDR support, a completely new desktop environment and some rumors that SteamOS is finally going to be released for devices other than the Steam Deck. In today's video we are going to take a look at some of the things that changed this year, how it affected the Linux desktop and ultimately what we can expect at the upcoming year 2025. And without any further ado, let's get straight into it. The good stuff. In February we saw the release of KDE Plasma 6, a complete transition from the old QD5 framework which was used to build the user interface to QD6. With that we saw some minor design changes like the floating dock, the reordering of some settings, but also some new or reintroduced features like the new overview or cube effect. Generally speaking, this year each KD Plasma release had one motto. Refining the experience. And they really delivered. Each release tried to fix annoyances and improve usability. And it even looks a lot nicer in many places if we compare it to the initial release or Plasma 5 beforehand. Plasma 6.1 improved the edit mode, added inbuilt remote desktop support and allows you to sync the RGB of your keyboard to your screen. 6.2 improved the tablet experience for artists, color and power management, better accessibility and the design. And 6.3, which isn't even out yet, already continues to improve it even further. I myself used KD Plasma for an extended period of time this year. And while I really liked it, the workspaces, overall smoothness and interestingly some occasional crashes of DaVinci Resolve made me switch back to GNOME once version 46 was released. It was before the quality of life patches though, so things could be different now. Speaking of GNOME, it also received a couple of important changes this year. Variable refresh rate support has been released as an experimental setting and it works really well. Uh, on one screen at least, since it still does have some rough edges here and there. This feature in particular was very important to me, since when I occasionally played the horrible optimized game Counter-Strike 2 on Linux, I actually needed it before I discovered this weird workaround that fixed the FPS issue. The second reason on why VRR was so important for me is my Microsoft Surface, since it saves battery life by a lot. In fact, as of Fedora 40, I actually don't use any third party tools like TLP anymore. They also finally added the long overdue DRM lease protocol for allowing VR headsets to take control of the visuals. And tearing support for gaming if you prefer a really low latency has also seen some work. Oh and KD Plasma 6 also fixed it this year for out of the box use, since while the option was there already, it didn't work on Wayland yet without setting a special environment variable. Nvidia support. One thing that the Linux community probably didn't expect this year was a slight shift in Nvidia's approach to Linux. While they still mostly rely on their proprietary driver and are of course still difficult to work with in some areas, they have increased their commitment to contribute to open source, promised better Wayland support and with the awesome work done by the desktop environments and Linux community, the Wayland stutters have also been resolved. So if you have an Nvidia GPU, you probably don't need to worry about it anymore. Even though from personal experience, it wasn't really that bad to begin with as some made it out to be. In August we saw the release of the first Cosmic Desktop Environment Alpha and as the ground framework it worked. Sure it wasn't perfect, missed polishing in a lot of areas and applications weren't all that functional. But over the rest of the year the pacing of System76 was faster than I expected. With the current Alpha version 4 they already shipped VRR support, which is a feature that I didn't expect to be released anytime sooner than mid next year. Sure, it's an alpha and everything is still coming together, but the changes made with each release in this short time frame were just incredible. And just for this I'd like to congratulate the awesome developers of Cosmic because this is just insane. And I believe that Cosmic is generally a good thing. It builds a really nice bridge between the currently only two desktop environments, not counting tiling window managers, that fully support Wayland as their default session. The simplicity and stability of GNOME, as well as the faster development of KDE Plasma, but it also somehow reminds me of Cinnamon a bit. A collection of inspirations, something new and well optimized, especially for their own hardware I imagine. Let's talk about gaming. According to ProtonDB, over 17,000 games are now Steam Deck verified, so games that Valve took a look at, and more than 23,000 have been recommended by at least one user on ProtonDB itself. And this is not counting all the games that haven't been tested, reviewed or outside of Steam. So the actual number is probably much higher. 
In fact, the only games that are not working are usually games protected by kernel-level anti-cheats that either don't have a Linux version or the developers or publishers won't enable support for it by choice. Sure, I already said it in a previous video, those games are unfortunately often the heavy hitters with a lot of players. And it would be really nice if they were made compatible, since from a technical standpoint, Linux could probably run them just fine. Otherwise, it's great nowadays. Another improvement for all you modders out there, Nexus Mods is now also supporting Linux via their new Nexus Mods app, so you don't have to run them via Wine or Proton anymore. And last but not least, a more minor thing, but a lot of people still use it, screen sharing support with audio is finally coming to Discord on Wayland. And it was really about time. So overall, it was a really good year, and we even saw quite the rise in user numbers, if these statistics can be taken seriously. But it wasn't always smooth sailing. The market share was already a bit higher this year than it is now. Why this is, I can't really explain, but it could be related to the detection method or some values change that affect the statistics. My overall perception is that Linux seems to become more popular and that more and more people know about it. This should help to hopefully negate the anti-cheat issues down the line, because for me it was kind of a dark year. One of my favorite free time shooters, Apex Legends, has removed Linux support from their game, even though it was verified on Steam. So this sucks, and it also proves that Valve's verification program is kind of useless when it comes to long-term compatibility, and I really hope that they do something about that. And then there is of course EA in general, who swapped more games over to their own new anti-cheat, which as far as I know has not seen any development towards supporting Linux at some point. So FIFA, or well EA Sports nowadays, as well as Battlefield 1.5 and 2042 are not supported as of this moment, and the same goes for League of Legends unfortunately. This one in particular is also kind of spitting into the face of Linux users, since the macOS version, despite using an entirely different anti-cheat, still has support. So Linux support was only removed because Riot deemed it so. Anyway, these were just a few setbacks that affected me personally this year, and they are also probably just temporary. With Proton and Steam backing Linux, it's not going anywhere. And in fact, we might actually see other popular hardware vendors to try it out as well. I've said it before, but once a couple of them switch over to Linux as a supported platform, it will see a relatively massive increase of users. And I truly believe that Linux is ready for it. It already supports all the things that an average user is going to need, and specialized software is just a matter of time, since with Wine they wouldn't even need to completely re-engineer it at first. For me 2024 was still one of the most exciting years so far. I've never had a more stable and blazing fast experience any time before, and I can't wait to continue this journey in the year 2025. HDR support, a lot of polishing and accessibility options will certainly be one of the most interesting things, and I definitely plan to stay on Linux. But that's still in the future. For now, I want to wish you all a happy new year, stay safe, and before you take off, don't forget to hit that like button. I'll see you very soon. And as always, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you in the year 2025.